to find area of circle. Just a minute, let me put this on recording. Okay, now this is on recording. So today, inshallah, we're going to take chapter number four, which is decision making and looping. Chapter number three gives us uh, a clear idea about writing a program in C sharp. We can solve or uh, we can write any program uh, in C sharp, which is a sequential program. And uh, we have wrote, uh, we did wrote two programs. One is to find area of circle and uh, there is to proof uh, to get the proof of one of the uh, Pythagoras uh, theorem, which is uh, sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1, which we did uh, in our last meeting. Now in today's meeting, we are discussing further about decision making and looping in programming. Those who have taken other programming course, like Java or any other programming language, they are aware of this decision making and looping. And uh, this decision making and looping is to write our program in more effective way in which we can select different type of data and based on some conditions, some equations, we can execute some statements based on some conditions or some decisions or sometimes we need to repeat a number of statements for a number of time to solve any problem so that we use looping so decision making and looping the chapter objectives are explain the decision statements in c sharp explain iteration statements in c sharp describe break continue and go to statements right now before we start this uh, decision making uh, i just want to bring a scenario in front of you basically a c sharp program is a set of statements that are normally executed sequentially as they appear so the execution is line by line we have seen our last pro our pro one of the, our program that when we a wrote a program to find area of circle right that the execution goes line by line fine so let me just show you uh, that again by sharing the screen uh, here I can switch to the Microsoft Visual Studio and I'll show you here that how the execution goes the execution goes line by line right so for example uh, let's say that uh, we are to find uh, area of circle. We did this in our last uh, in our la in our last lab session. Let me just repeat this double radius, and we ask the user console dot write enter radius of circle. And for this radius, we are going to find uh, the area. So we read it, convert dot to int 32, or let's convert into double because it is double to double of console dot read line. We are going to convert this now. We are going to just apply the formula that area is equal to math dot pi multiplied by radius multiplied by radius, which is radius square. And we got the area, and now we'll just print that area as console dot right line the area. area of circle is area 
So it's very simple that we are printing the area of circle by entering the radius. So the execution goes first the declaration, then it will ask the user to enter the uh, area of circle. And it goes uh, to ask the, uh, it goes to calculate the area and finally it goes to print the area of circle. So let's say I enter 2.5, I get the area of circle here, okay? And we have seen that we can round this to some decimal points by using round function, all right? So now the execution here is line by line, fine. Now what if like, for example, area of circle is what? It is the, uh, radius square and multiplied by the pi. Okay. Now, when we have a circle, the circle radius is always a positive number, which is greater than zero. If the radius is zero, there is no circle. If the radius is negative, there is no circle with negative radius. Right. So, what is the radius? Is this the center of the circle? And this is the circle. This is what the radius is. Now, radius is always greater than zero, right? If the radius is less than zero, then there is no circle with radius less than zero or minus radius, fine? So we don't have any radius, any circle with minus radius. Radius is always greater than zero. So now, what if in our program, if we enter Let's say if we enter uh, a negative value, let's say, for example, minus 2.3 as the radius, we still have the area of the circle, which is wrong, which is wrong. So we need to do something here that when we enter the radius invalid input or an invalid value like the negative or less than zero, then we should not do this calculations. We should just say that there is the, the, the radius is invalid, all right? So how we can do that is what we are gonna learn today in decision making, in decision making, okay? So this involves a kind of decision making to see whether a particular condition has occurred or not, that is the radius is greater than zero or not. Then direct the computer to execute certain statements according to that, according to the condition that what we are gonna specify. Yes, brother, do you have any question? Any question? Great. If no questions, yes. better that's it. Is there any question, please? Yes. Yes, go ahead with your question, please. I think it's more. Yes, please. Three watchable LMS, Mocha. Watchable. Okay. We are going to discuss, inshallah, any soal, other topic that we are working on. So, inshallah, in the end of the lecture, inshallah, we will talk about it. Okay. If you have any questions related to what we are discussing, please you can ask. Otherwise, all these questions keep it at the end of the lecture. Inshallah, we will discuss that. Okay. Thank you. So in this decision making and branching statement, we have a certain statements in C sharp. Okay. So <clears throat> the branching statements uh, is when a program breaks the sequential flow and jumps to another part of the code, it is called branching. And when the branching is the branching is based on a particular condition, then we call it as a conditional branching. And if it is not 
on based on any condition or without any decision it is called unconditional branching so we have two types of branching one is based on some condition based on some uh, statement which is for example if the radius is greater than zero we do calculate the area and we print the area if not we don't do we don't print it right so the the execution the calculation of the area is based on this that radius is greater than zero so this is called conditional branching whereas in some of in some way that we don't check any condition rather we jump just we jump to some statement in our program that is called unconditional branching so c sharp language process decision making capabilities and support the following statements which are called control or decision making statements which are the if statements switch statement conditional operator statement conditional operator statement we did discuss in our last meeting when we were discussing about the operators we thought we did discuss about it the conditional statement the question mark and the colon the conditional statement okay anyhow we just gonna go through it inshallah in the coming slides so we have three type of decision making and branching statements or decision control statements which are if statement switch statement and conditional operator statement to start with the if statement if statement may be implemented in different forms whether it is the simplest uh, if statement if else statement if else if ladder or in nested if statement these implementation is based on the situation is based on the requirement of the program in the program <clears throat> so it depends on <clears throat> is based on what we want to do whether it is possible to do our program with just simply using simple if statement or we need if else or we need if else if ladder or we need to go through nested if else okay, it depends on the requirement of the program and what we need in the program we use based on it the if statements one of the following if statements okay so basically uh, we have these four different forms of if statements simple if if else statement if else if ladder and nested if statement fine we start with a simple if a simple if is very simple it's a two way decision statement and used in conjunction with the expression of the form if the expression this expression should be a boolean expression this expression should be a boolean expression which means this expression must return either true or false this should return either true or false okay so that means we are going to put this statement this expression in the if right that gives us the value either true or false after solving this expression for example if the radius is greater than 0 so if the radius is greater than 0 if r is for example 2.3 this is true right so this returns true and if r is minus 2.3 this returns false right so we need to have the expression such as expression that gives us a boolean result or a boolean value whether true or false so it goes like this the first the if checks the condition if the condition is true it execute some conditional code based on this true condition if not if the condition is false it skips this statement and continue with the next statement after skipping this part okay now uh, it's very simple to understand let's take our program here that we want to check whether the radius is greater than 0 so if we say that if the radius is greater than 0 we are going to do this that we calculate the area and we print the area okay otherwise we simply do nothing okay and we just for the purpose of testing 
uh, let's say just we put a statement called thank you. Fine. Now in this case, when we enter the radius, it checks after entering the radius, it, the expression here is a Boolean expression. It checks whether the radius is greater than zero or not, right? So if it is zero or if it is greater than zero, this becomes true. If this is true, it gets into this block, the if block, okay? Calculate the area and print the area. And if this is false, it skips this if block and goes to the next statement after the block, okay? Now let us just simply test this with some values. Uh, I'm just gonna give you first uh, a positive value, let's say 2.3. So we have area of circle and we have thank you. Why? Because this goes to find the area and after this print thank you. So 2.3 is greater than zero. So it gets in, calculate the area, print the area and continues to the next statement, which is thank you. Now, what if we enter a negative value 2.3 so it just have a thank you why because the condition becomes false here that radius is greater than zero becomes false once it is false it is skip the if block right and go to the thank you this is the simplest if what is called the simplest if right if the condition is true we execute the if block if not then we just skip the if block and continue to the statement after the if block. This is the very simplest form of it. Okay, so this is how the general form is if the Boolean expression, what we had, for example, radius is greater than zero, the statement blocks, that is, you can add one statement, more than one statement, and we just simply say that, okay, we calculate the area and we print the area, and then we have other statements after this block, okay? When the condition is true, when the condition is true, it execute this if block and continue to the next statements. And if the condition is false, it jumps this, it skip this if block and continue to the next statement after the if block. If block ends here, that is with the opening of bracket and closing of bracket, this is the if block. Okay, the condition true, this block will be executed. That's what we have seen in our program, that if this is true, this will be executed. Okay, otherwise that will be skipped. So we have other example here to check the number is greater than five. If the number is greater less than five, we add this number five to the number. And if the number is less than five, okay, uh, if just uh, let's say, for example, number is 10, 10 less than five is false. So we just skip this and comes here. And if let's say here number is two, so it goes two less than five true, it comes in add five. Okay. Another example. So here the expression is true and here the expression is false. Okay. So this is the code for it. You can try this code or you can try that uh, area of circle program also just to understand how the things are working. Moving ahead, the if else statement. The if else statement says we have the another block which is the else block. The else block is executed when the condition or the expression becomes false. Okay, so it says that if the expression is true, we execute this if block. And if the expression is false, we are gonna skip the if block and execute the else block. Fine. Now, if this is true, we are gonna execute this if block and skip the else block, come to the next statement after the if else. And if this is false, we are going to ex skip this if block and execute the else block and continue to the next statement after the if else block. Right? Now, why we need else, why we need if else is that sometimes we want to give the user a response or sometimes in different uh, conditions, we need to execute different statements. Okay. 
Uh, if you take this example, what we are doing here is that when we enter a negative value, let's say for example, minus 2.3, it says just thank you. But we don't understand why this gives thank you and why there is no area. There is no proper message here that what is happening okay, to the user. Of course, we are the programmer, we are writing, we know that, but when the user is using such programs, we enter the negative value, it says thank you. So what is happening? Why there is no area, right? So here, a proper way is that we can give some message here by adding else. That is, if the condition is false, if the condition is false, we can just simply write to the user that invalid radius, or you can say radius cannot be negative. Radius cannot be cannot be negative value or we can say radius must be greater than zero some statement that gives a clear idea to the user that what happened and why I am not getting the radius, uh, sorry, why I am not getting the area after I enter the radius, okay? So this is else block is a false block. When the condition become false, the else block is executed and the statement goes, uh, the next statement will be, uh, you know, executed. And if the condition is true, the if block is executed and the else is skipped and goes to execute the next statement after the if else block. So then let us run this and see uh, for different values. Let's say for a positive value, it gives us the radius, sorry, the area and prints thank you, All right? So it is skipping that else block, fine. And now let us enter the negative value. We get the message invalid radius or radius must be greater than zero, thank you. So it is skipping that if block, okay? And printing thank you. In all the cases, thank you statement is printed because thank you statement is out of the if else block. It is not inside the if else block. It is out of the if else block, this thank you statement. So in all cases, this statement is executed, okay? So this forms the if else block. If the condition is true, the if block is executed. If it is false, the else block is executed, okay? So in all cases, either of this will be executed, but not both but not both. It will be either of any of these two statements, but not both, right? So this is the if else statement, okay? We have here, if the number is less than five, we add five to the number, else we add minus five to the number, okay? So if the expression is true, this will be executed, if block and skipping the else block and if the expression is false the, the it will skip the if block and execute the else block and comes code after the if else block okay this is how the if else statement works so if boolean expression is true then true block is executed that is the if block true block here it means if block otherwise the false block that is the else block is executed in either case either block true block that is a if block or false block, that is the else block, will be executed, but not both, okay? In both the cases, the control is transferred to the statement X, which is the last statement, where we have the thank you statement in our case. So here, in is, here is an example, we're using if and else, and we have the statement after the if else, okay? So this is uh, as if else statement. So we have taken if statement and the if else, a statement. Moving ahead, if we have a multiple conditions to test and execute one of the many blocks of code, if else if statements are used. So there are more than one conditions to check, right? For example, we want to print the grade of a student based on his marks. If the marks is between 50 to 57, we say grade D. If the marks is between 65 to uh, 58 to 65, 
we say grade C. If the marks is 66 to 73, we say grade C plus. If the marks is 74 to 81, we say grade B. If the marks is 82 to 89, B plus. If the marks is 90 and above, we say A, grade A. Now here we have multiple conditions to check. After the user enters the marks, there are multiple conditions to check, right? Whether it is 90 and above, or it is between 82 and 89, or if it is between 74 to 81, or if it is between 67 to 73, and so on, right? So this, a number of conditions we check, okay? Either of these condition is true. Any one of these conditions will be true, and hence uh, the grade can be printed, fine? So there we're gonna use the if else if, ladder if else if ladder for example we check this if the number is less than five we print number is less than five or if it is greater than five it is greater than five else it is equal to five if not less than not greater than it means equal to five okay so we see that if else if and finally else so if the first condition is true the first true block will be executed, that is the if block will be executed, and it will jump here. Any statement after the if else. This, this is complete if else block. If else allowed or black. Then if the first condition is false, then it will skip it and comes to check the second condition. If this is true, the second block is executed. Okay, and skipping the third block and comes to the statement after the else block and if both are false if this is also false then the last else block is executed and then it goes to the next statement after the else ladder block so i have a question yes please so in uh, if else if uh, we have more than two decisions right yes and uh, the last decision must, must be else or, or uh, else if is correct also. Second decision or last? Last one. No, the last is else block. This should be there in the last. Why? Because if none of these condition is true, the last else will be executed. Okay. So it depends on number of conditions. In this example, we have two uh, conditions, right? we have two conditions fine the last is just else why because this is false and this is false and ob obviously when two are false the third is true right so we don't need to check any condition here we just say else block right this f comes under this if if this is false then the else block is executed so we don't need to write again the third if here Okay, so it is just two conditions. You, you might have more than one, more than two, like what just I said, if the, if the grade is, if the marks is greater than 90, 90 greater than or equal to 90 grade A or something like this, okay? So if you just like, let's just uh, test it here. Uh, I'll just take some marks here, right? Just to give you an idea and we try to do it like how does it work so i'll say like uh, okay i'll ask the user double marks and i'll ask the user that to enter the marks console.write enter the student marks to print the grade. So I'll just read that into the marks. Marks is equal to word dot to double console dot read line. So I'll we'll just read. Now we got the marks. Now this is where we check if the marks is greater than or equal to 90 right so what we are going to do we just say console dot 
console dot right line create a right. now here comes the else if why you need else if is that we have another condition if the marks is greater than 90 it's okay we print grade a and it, it comes out and say it comes out and say that okay we are uh, you got grade a and finish right now if not this then we check the next condition is that if the marks is greater than or uh, it is uh, greater than uh, 84 and marks less than 89 so it is between 84 and 89 okay we say console dot right line grade b plus right. so the third we have another option that if the marks is greater than 80 uh, sorry greater than 74 and marks is less than 84 right so this is what we say console dot right line grade b okay now uh, let's similarly we are going to add if else if else if else fine when we reach to the marks below 50 right or let's say that 74 is the last and after 74 73 is fail here we don't need to check because anything below 73 or below 74 is fail so we just simply say else and we'll say that console dot right line or grade f I'm just skipping here for example we have the C C plus C and D but I'm just for testing purpose like just to show you that how the if else if ladder works now if the marks is let's say that it's greater than or equal to 90 then it will print grade A and come out of this if else if ladder and if there is any statement like for example console dot right line thank you this statement of thank you will be printed okay now what if the, i enter the marks like for example uh, 85 so this condition is true marks is less than greater than 84 and it is less than 89 so it is true print grade b and simply come here and print thank you and what if the marks is let's say 80 so it comes here the first condition is false second condition is false third condition is true that is 80 is between 74 and 84 right it is 83 or 84 okay then we print grade b what if i enter 70 or 50 or any number less than 70 sorry less than 74 none of the condition is true so it comes directly here to the else and print grade f and print thank you okay so this is how the if else if ladder works so let's test in this program just like for example i enter 90 it prints me grade a and thank you i enter for example 89 it prints me grade f sorry it should be grade uh less than 90 it should be here so if it is 89 grade b plus okay and what if it is let's say for example uh, 83 it is grade b and anything less than 74 let's say for example 50 grade f fine so now we see that 
that we have multiple conditions to check and every condition is you know is branched here that only one of these conditions will be true at any time if all these conditions are false the last else block will be executed okay so it not necessarily only three uh, if a statement it can be any number of a statement for example if we want to add more here for uh, C plus for C D you can add right you can add hundreds of if else if else if else depends on the requirement what is your program it depends on what you are doing in the program right so that's uh, how the if else if ladder works okay I hope this uh, also clears your doubt is it clear well, Fine. So moving ahead, there is an example here. This is also a very good example, right? Uh, it gives you uh, an options. It's a menu and says press one for addition, press two for subtraction, press three for multiplication and four for division. It asks you to enter two numbers, number one, number two, first number, second number and enter your option that what you want to do. You want to add these two numbers subtract these two numbers multiply these two numbers or divide these two numbers okay and based on your option one two three four that will be taken into this variable option opt okay based on this option we are going to check if if the option is one that is add the result is add and we print that addition if the option is two else if the option is two if not one we check for two if two we do the subtraction and print the subtraction else. If not two, else if option is three, we multiply and print it. If not three, else if option is four, we divide it and print it. If not four, let's say that user enter five, six, seven, eight, which is not an option here. Then else we say invalid option, try again. And there is something called go to label. So there is a label here right what is this label the label is a mark here that go to label will simply jump this jump this uh, cursor the control from here from go to the label here and start from again from here so in case if the user enter five six seven eight any number other than these numbers then it goes to the else says invalid and says go to label go to this label this is unconditional decision or transfer here there is no condition to take the control back to the here back to the label here or to the beginning without any condition just say go to this is what the unconditional transfer of the control without any condition okay Otherwise, if you enter, for example, let's say four, then this will be executed and it just simply come out and stop the program. If you enter any invalid value and it goes take you back here. OK, so you can try this program uh, back at home uh, with, and try to add one more option. You add this uh, go to label in every option here. In option one, after this printing, go to label, go to label, go to label here, and go to label here, like what is there here. Okay. And try one more option here console.write line, press phi to exit. Press phi to exit. And add a else if option is equal to phi, then open the bracket and say console.write line, thank you for using calculator that's it it will come out so we can add one more option here as what as an exit option and we can keep this repeat this program till we press that exit option okay so this is like a challenge for you to try that okay simply by adding uh, an option five here to exit and in that option we add here else if before this else we add one more else if option is equal to five open the bracket and say uh, thank you for using calculator that's it then it will come out and directly say don't add go to label there 
Okay, it will come out directly here. In all other cases, add go to label because it will repeat again. If you enter first one, it will show the plus and go to label will take to the beginning again. So it will repeat from again for the next calculations for the next calculations and so on. So every time you enter the numbers, every time you press any option, multiplication or subtraction, it will give you that. OK, so take this as in as in as in exercise program and uh, do it at home to just, you know, make it more clear for you how to use the LC ladder. This is one of the output of it. This is how you get the menu and you enter the numbers. You enter the option for this division. So you get the division. here. Fine. Uh, similarly, we can use this to find, let's say, for example, uh, the greater of two numbers, greater of three numbers, the largest of two numbers, largest of three numbers. OK, so in here, for example, nice for example, enter two numbers and find which is the greater. OK. Nested if coming to the nested if if inside a if statement, we call it as a nested if. Any if inside another if we call it as a nested if. OK, so for example, if condition and inside this if block, we add another condition. And else this else relates to the nearest if. And this else is to this if because this if block. OK, we have another. This is called the nested if. The nested if if inside another if is called the nested if. Nested if can be used to find the largest of three numbers. For example, we have three numbers and we want to find which is the largest of these three numbers. So we can check that if the first number is greater than the second number. If this is true, then we check if the, if the first is greater than third and if first is greater than second and greater than third, then we say first is the largest number. Otherwise, the third is the largest number in this case. Why? Because first is greater than second and first is greater than third first is largest first is greater than second first is less than third it means it is automatically greater than the third is greater than second right so third is the largest now if this else is with this if the nearest if and now the next if for example, let's say that first is not greater than second. First is less than second. Then we simply test whether the second is greater than third. So we check if else if second is greater than third, we say second is the largest. Otherwise, third is the largest. Okay, this is also a nested if. So nested if is if inside another if we call it as an nested if this can be used wherever it is required for example finding largest of three numbers or any such uh, conditions where we want to test uh, we need uh, to check more than one condition okay if this particular condition is true we go to check other conditions right so in that case we can use this if else if uh, sorry nested if okay fine half cup. Another round? Anyone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So moving ahead, the switch statement. Switch statement is uh, very simple and it's more and it's very similar to the if else if ladder. In the switch statement, we are not going to use this expression as a Boolean expression. This expression will must give as a value. A value. Whether it is an integer value, a number, or it can be a character or any other value. This expression must give as a value. Right? Whereas in the if else, the expression, what we say, this should be a Boolean expression that gives us true or false. But in the switch, it is also a conditional statement, but this is you uses a value. OK, the, the switch is a multi way decision statement. Where. We select a particular block 
or a statement to be executed based on some values based on some value okay and switch has the cases for every value for example if this value the expression has a value if this value matches with this value one then this block is executed and break it means break the switch come out of the switch and if not matching with this the next case will be checked and if this is matching this block will be executed and break will break it and come out of this if none of the cases is matching then the default block will be executed and break will bring the statement out of the switch okay so switch the flow chart for the switch is given here and uh, we can implement the same program of the multiplication division and all in uh, by using the switch okay so I'll, I'll let us just put this in the Microsoft Visual Studio. I'll try to just you know copy this because it's a long code. It takes some time from us, so it's better uh, that uh, I'll copy this here so that we can do it. Okay, so I'll just uh, you know try to copy and paste it here so that uh, it's, it did not take much time for us. Okay, just comment it here, paste it here. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me just delete it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, let me continue this, the switch. Um, and I'll paste it here. This. Fine. So what's happening here is that I'm using switch here, right? So this is the menu, what I get. And uh, one, two, three, four, enter the first number, second number, and enter your option out of this one, two, three, four. Now we are gonna switch the option. It's a value, right? The option is a value, either it is one, two, three, four, or any other value. Now this value, we're gonna put it in the cases, case one. If it is one is pressed. 
then we add them and display the addition and say break break it means break the switch and come out of the switch here okay and add a statement here and just to say uh console dot right line thank you And uh, if we enter two, for example, the division, so it will go and check for case one. One is not equal to two, so it will just go for the next case. And it's two, case two is matching with this option two. Then it will do the subtraction and break. We'll simply break it and come out here and say thank you. Break the switch and come out. Similarly, if I enter three, it will go for case three. And when I enter four, it will go for case four. When I enter any other the, any value other than these one, two, three, four, then it will simply go to the default and say invalid option, go to label. So it will take to the label here and continue the execution again from here. Okay, let's simply try this and see what results we get here for different options. So here is the menu, one for addition, two for subtraction, right? So enter the first number. So for example, I enter the first number 10, second number 20, enter your option, let's say one. So I have 10 plus 23, 30, sorry, and thank you, right? So it's done. So it adds these two numbers, break will break the switch, and simply bring me here. The control comes here, say thank you, and the program ends here, okay? Uh, if I enter, for example, 10, 20, and I say second option, it is the result done. And if I enter, let's say, for example, uh, 10, 20, and the option is four, we got the result done. And uh, what if I enter, for example, let's say five so it says uh, five five two numbers enter your option option is five it says invalid option please try again it takes me menu again enter the first number second number right now how it is happening right for example i enter now five five and the option is four division thank you done right so when i enter five it comes here, option five, and check for case five. There is no case five. It goes to the default and prints this and say, go to label. Go to label, take the control here, and it starts execution from here again. Okay. Sir, so, the go to is a do? Yeah, go to is just unconditional jump, where we want to jump from one place to another place in our program. Uh, without checking any condition in some places like this we want to jump so it is in uh, a conditional uh, what do you say a jump statement from one place to another so, so instead of label i can put uh, go to like uh, case one and we will do yeah yeah you can you can put like that you can put any label here okay you can put any label, any name, any keyword, like uh, uh, any identifier you can use, uh, except the, the keywords, okay? Uh, as if like variable names you are using, okay? You follow that uh, any instructions of variable. Similarly, you can add any label here. Test one, test two, or jump one, jump two, Okay, uh, pro programmers use these labels. They want to test something, you know. Uh, they want to do some testing, and all the programmers usually use these labels, go to and all. Okay. Okay. Now I I uh, let us do this. Uh, go to label that we want to repeatedly. We want to add another option of uh, exit and console dot right line of press s5 
to exit. We are going to add option five, case five here. Case five. And we just simply say in case five that thank you for using calculator or thank you and just come out. So dot right line and they say thank you for using calculator and just we just come out we don't we just say break okay now all other options we want to repeat it like if we want to repeat it every time we enter option one and we did addition and then again we want to continue from the menu we just simply say go to label that's it we add this go to label in every statement okay and we continue it go to label and go to label fine every statement so we don't need here a uh, break that's why it is given here as a, a green that it will not reach because if you are using go to break will not be uh, will not reach here right so option five will keep it like this an invalid option will keep it like this okay so now let us run this and uh, for example we want five first number second number five we want first option addition so this is the addition what we have and we have the menu again right enter the first number 10 20 uh, option 3 multiplication we have 10 20 200 menu again okay and five to exit and any other number for example six invalid number sorry six six and the option six invalid option menu again now for example uh, fa uh, first number uh, 10 20 and i don't want anything i just want exit 5 exit thank you for using calculator and thank you again that is the last statement what we have here okay now in this case the break is unreachable why because uh, every time it goes to the go to this break will not never execute because we are using go to label okay uh, I just used it here just to give you an idea about, you know, you can use the go to say not. Now, uh, about the default statement, default should be the last statement. After all cases is been tested, the last will be the default. And default can have a break or cannot have a break. It's an optional for default to have a break or to not have any break. OK, now let me just uh, remove this go to label and let us test the break and without break any case with break and with no break what will happen okay. option five thank you for using invariant option okay now we have the break in every case there is a break fine and uh, we have five cases one five number five option for exit and so on okay now let us see that uh, for example we don't have a break for case one there is no break here for case one and we select the case one option we have here Control cannot fall through from one of the case table case one to another one because of there is no break. There is no break. There is an build error. Continue. Even if we execute this, for example, first number is 10, second number is 20, and I enter the first option in which there is no break. Right? So what did happen? It goes to menu again it goes to menu again okay because it went to the uh, to the last to the beginning of the program again fine so this there is some error here there is some error which is you know running the program abrupt or in a 
wrong fashion. Until it finds the uh, the 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 uh, what is called the uh, the break statement that is in Java, right? Yes, I think yes, in uh, Java. Yeah, in Java, it is like that. Yeah, but but here it is not the case. It takes you to the beginning of the program, right? It is not the the same case here. It takes you to the beginning of the program again. Okay, so we have to make sure that there is a break here for every case so that the program executes properly. The program works properly. So this is the switch statement where uh, this is how the switch works. We can use a uh, switch, you know, uh, and if, if else, if ladder, fine. Uh, inter, we can, you know, interchangeably, we can use this switch and if else, if, okay. We also have here, for example, a uh, switch statement for to check a character is oval or not. So we ask the user to enter in character and we convert this character to the lower uh, to a to a lower character and and we check every character of oval if it is a oval e oval and so on okay what if for example if i want to bring uh, all cases let's say for example a e i o u all cases in one statement that can be done. First you write case A, then you write case E, then you write case. At the end you write console dot write line oval and break. Okay, and then we have a default that says not an oval and break. Break is optional here. If you add a break here, if you don't add, this will just come out of the switch. Okay, the break is optional here. So that's about the switch statement. Okay. So we have taken these if else, uh, simple if, if else, if else, if ladder, nested if, and the switch statement. Moving ahead to the conditional operator, we have taken this conditional operator in our last meeting when we discuss about the operators. Okay, so it's very simple that we use a ternary operator, or it's also called a conditional operator. It uses question mark and a colon as an operator. The expressions are based on the uh, condition. These expressions are taken based on the condition. If the condition is true, the first expression is executed, will be assigned, here will be taken uh, to a variable where we assign or will be printed. And if the condition is false, in that case, the second expression will be taken, right? Uh, I did show you in the last, uh, in the last uh, meeting by taking an example. Uh, we can still have this example, for example, if a number is Boolean or not. So let's, uh, sorry, if a number is odd or even, okay? If it is a even or not. So if the number is two, uh, we'll take a Boolean variable is even. Number mod two is equal to zero. If this is true, the true value, that is the true will be assigned to is even. Otherwise, if this is false, and the false value will be assigned to is even. Okay. Uh, so if you look back into the previous uh, lecture uh, that we have taken an example of uh, printing whether it is a even number or odd number by taking a string variable. Okay. Uh, the if else and the conditional operator we can use the interchangeably uh, if else with a conditional operator. Sometimes in the exams they last like this. They'll give a conditional operator and write ask you to write this in a, using if else or they give an if else and ask you to write uh, by using conditional operator. Okay. So you have to be ready for that by practice. So you can do some practice for this and uh, by taking some example programs. So that you will be ready for that. So this is about the decision making statement. We have taken if 
if else a, if else if uh, ladder nested if switch conditional these are the uh, some of the uh, these are the conditional or decision making statement or branching statements okay moving ahead to the looping statements the looping statements are used to repeat a number of uh, repeat a block or a set of statements or a statement a number of times right any instruction that you want to repeat for example 10 times 20 times 100 times 1000 times right that we can use by using the looping statements okay so there are different looping statements that we are going to talk here inshallah or discuss here inshallah uh, uh, so here that looping is a process of uh, repeatedly executing a block okay a uh, block of statements or a, a statement right uh, it can be executed a uh, number of times okay from or from zero to infinite number or if it goes to the infinite number fine for example the loop does not stop it is executing 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 there is no condition uh, that to stop the loop or there is no statement to stop the loop then that is an infinite loop okay if the loops continues forever it is called infinite loop c sharp supports such looping features to enable us to develop concise program containing containing the repetitive process so a program loop therefore consists of two segments one is called the body of the loop the other is called the control statement that controls the loop Right. The body of the loop is executed number of times, but there should be a control statement to control the loop to be executed a finite number of times. For example, 10 times, 20 times, 5 times, okay, or until some particular condition becomes false or a particular condition becomes true. Okay, so there should be a control statement to control the loop. And at one at some particular time, the loop will stop. Otherwise, the loop goes infinite. And this infinite loop can create problems within the system where the program is running. OK. So the loop should have uh, the control statement and the body of the state loop. The control statement tests certain condition and that directs repeated uh, execution of the statement, which is inside the body of the loop. Depending on the position of the control statement in the loop, a control structure may be classified either entry control loop or exit control loop. So that means the loop can be classified as entry control loop or exit control loop. Now, when we say the loop is entry controlled and when we say the loop is exit controlled, entry control loop is when the control conditions are tested before the start of the loop execution. That means first we test the condition, then we start executing the body of the loop. If the condition is not satisfied, the body of the loop will not be executed. In such cases, we call it as an entry controlled loop. That means the entry to the execution of the loop. For example, this is the loop body and we have a condition here before this loop body is executed. So this condition is tested. If this is true, for example, then this will be executed. Otherwise, it will, it will never repeat this, right? So this is what we call entry control loop. We are controlling the loop at the beginning, okay? At the start of the loop. So this is called entry control loop. And in case of exit control loop, the test is performed. This condition test is performed at the end of the body of the loop. And therefore, the body is executed unconditionally for the first time. That means we have the body of the loop and the test condition is here. The test condition is at the end of the body of the loop. So that means the control comes in here, execute this body and then checks the condition. If it is false, this come out of the loop. 
that means that the the body of the loop is executed unconditionally for the first time and then it goes to check the condition that means even if the first time the condition is false the loop body is executed so in this case the loop body is executed at least once okay and in the first case the entry control the loop body is executed only the condition is true only the condition is true okay so this is what is called exit control loop the, the loop is controlled on exit from the body of the loop okay so the test condition should be carefully stated in order to perform the desired number of loop execution that is the test condition we need to carefully write the test condition so that the loop will execute a number of time finite number of time and it will not go infinite loop okay so entry control loop example is here first test the condition if the condition is true you did and again it goes to repeat the loop to test the condition and it goes on and if the if it is false come out of the loop if the condition is false and in exit control first the body of the loop is executed then it will check the condition if the condition is true again repeat this loop and if the condition is false exit from the loop so once the condition become false the loop is executed in both the cases we see that there should be a time that this condition become false so that we come out of the loop and continue the execution of our program or stop the program right at some time these conditions must become false otherwise the loop will go infinite the simplest form of the loop is the while loop where we test the condition while this condition is true execute the body of the loop and continue checking the condition until this condition become false once this condition become false just come out of the loop okay so this condition is we need some initialization for this condition to be done which will be done here and this condition must be modified inside the body of the loop right because if it remains same if this condition remains same the loop will be infinite loop okay so for example this loop if you check this loop we have the loop control variable i this variable i is called loop control variable and loop control variable or this condition will be checked every time the loop is repeated okay so it is an entry controlled loop because first we are checking the condition so i is 1 here if i is less than or equal to 3 which is true right and comes in and say welcome to while loop iteration 1 now here you see this i plus plus what is this i plus plus students what is this i plus plus an increment an increment add 1 to the i variable right so i was 1 here now let us track the i i was 1 here plus plus will make i 2 right now this is the loop block right so it goes again to check the while condition while well, i is less than or equal to 3 i is what 2 2 less than or equal to 3 again true again print this statement welcome to while loop iteration 2 here the value of i is here 2 now okay this one and then increment i i becomes 3 here it goes 3 less than or equal to 3 true because it is equal right true print this statement then increment i i becomes 4 here 4 it goes again 4 less than or equal to 3 is false once it is false now it will come out of the loop here and there is no statement to execute the program stops here okay so this loop is repeated how many times three times the body is repeated three times what is the last value of i 4 okay now this statement i plus plus makes the loop to exit or to stop after repeating it three times what if we don't include this statement 
i remains 1 every time i is 1 1 less than 3 print this i is 1 1 less than 3 print this it goes on printing printing in such loop we call it as an infinite loop okay whether uh, in this case uh, the operating system will take care of it and see that if there is something is happening such kind of things the operating system will stop it or the system will go crash right so if we do like this for example uh, uh, we write such programs and we say that uh, while we create some infinite loops while true and we repeat some statements let's say that inside this body of the statement uh, we use uh, the system memory lot of system memory we store some files open file opening more than one file in that and do a lot of things inside this while block then what happens the loop is executing executing it takes all the memory of the system at one time the memory stack get full and there is a chance that system will go crash or there is a chance that the operating system if it is there is a security will stop this program fine so this is a kind of virus at any study which is uh, created people used to create a kind of virus that uh, they, they they write some program that takes all the memory of the system and they create an executable file of such programs and they simply send these executable files and make it run automatically so when this programs run automatically it takes all the memory of the system and the system goes crash or system will stop or system will hang right so that's uh, the other thing <coughs> fine so what we see here is that th this statement is the one which makes the loop to run three times and stop the loop otherwise if we don't include such a statement you know then the loop will go off so that means that this loop control variable will be altered in some way that the loop will execute will loop will exit after some finite number of repetitions okay so this is the while loop similarly uh, if you want to add numbers from 1 to 5 sum of numbers from 1 to 5 right we can use a while loop and we see start i from i in less than or equal to 5 sum is equal to sum plus i so 1 then 1 plus 0 then sum will be 1 so you can trace this for example let's say what is the value of i what is the value of sum after every iteration y starts at 1 sum 0 here right it comes to here the first condition is true gets in sum plus i is equal to uh, sum plus is equal to i it means sum is equal to sum plus i sum is 0 0 plus i 0 plus 1 is 1 i plus plus i becomes 2 so it goes again 2 less than 5 it is 2 right 2 less than 5 true now it is sum plus i so what is sum 1 1 plus 2 3 right again add i 1 to the i i becomes 3 3 less than 5 true so sum plus i 3 plus 3 is 6 and i becomes 4 again it goes 4 less than 5 true sum plus i 4 plus 6 it is 10 i becomes 5 5 less than 5 less than or equal to 5 true so sum plus i 10 plus 15 is sum 15 i becomes 6 6 less than 5 is false once it becomes false come out of the loop and print the sum which is 15 so this will is the output okay finding the sum of numbers can be like this okay uh, try to do this program find the sum of numbers uh, from between two numbers okay ask the user to enter two numbers let's say for example 10 20 now what is the sum of numbers between 10 and 20 so i must start from 10 and goes to 20 and every time we add this i to the sum right try to do this program just to practice this loop okay it will be interesting inshallah 
Similarly, for example, if you want to print a series of numbers like odd numbers, even numbers, right? We can do that by using the looping. Like here, in this example prints odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, up to 10. Similarly, if we want to print even numbers, okay, we start n from two, for example. So two plus two will be four. Instead of one, if we start from two, it will be two plus two, four, two, four, six, eight, and so on. Okay, the loop ends at once n becomes 10 or greater than 10. So this is the while loop we have. Okay. We have another loop which is called do while loop. Do while loop is an exit control loop, whereas the while loop is an entry control loop. Do while loop is an exit control loop. Do while is an exit control loop. In the do while loop, first the body of this statement or the body of the loop is executed, then the condition is being tested. Okay. So you can see this program which prints a table of a multiplication table of five. Okay, uh, we start from here. Do uh, these are the initializations? N i number is five. Do find the product of n in, and print this n multiply by five and add one to i increment i. Now we check at the end of this while i is greater than or equal to 10 and we put a semicolon here to show the end of the while loop, end of the do while loop, okay? So it goes again. If this condition is true, it repeats the loop again. Once this condition becomes false, it come out of the loop, okay? This is called exit control loop, okay? So you can find the difference between while and do while loop. While loop is an entry control, whereas do while is exit control. While loop, the first condition is checked in the while loop. So if the condition is false at the first time itself, the loop body is never executed. In the do while loop, if the condition is false at the first iteration, even the loop body is executed once, or the loop body is executed at least once, even the condition is false at the first time in the do while loop. Okay, so this is the difference between while and the do while loop, and you can use these while and the do while, okay, interchangeably. Uh, depends on the requirement where, where we need this to use. Okay, so these are while and the do while loop. We have the third loop which is called for loop. The for loop. Now, in, in the while loop and the do while loop, what you have seen, the loop operator, sorry, the, the loop control variable, like for example, here the n, and in this case, i, in this case, i, we check the i, we increment the i, right? We initialize the i, test the condition on i, and we increment the i, right? So i is a loop control variable. Once i becomes six or greater than five, I stop the loop, right? Similarly, here also I, we initialize the I, test the I, we increment the I. And in this program, N is the loop control variable. We check N, initialize N, check N, and we do increment or decrement N. We take action on N so that the loop will exit, okay? So these three things in the for loop is, is being given in one statement, in one line that become, that is a for loop. Okay, so we see that initialization, for example, i is equal to one, the test condition, i less than or equal to five, and the increment, i plus plus, is given in the one statement here, and the rest is included in the body of the statement. And this is for the for loop. And this is another entry control loop, because first the condition is tested before executing the body. So this is another entry control loop, okay? So the execution of the for loop is very simple. First, it will come and initialize the loop variable. Then this is the first step, right? Then it will go to check the condition. The second step, uh, let me put it again. The first step is that it will come in. This is the initialization is done. Then after that, the second is to test the condition. 
if this condition is true, or let me put it here. If it is true, it will come in, execute the body, and then goes to the increment or decrement, whatever here, whether it is increment or decrement, we make the change to the conditional variable, the loop variable, loop control variable. So we do it, for example, here I plus plus, let's say, okay. So it, so the third is executing the body of the loop, then the fourth is incrementing this or decrement, whatever. Then it goes to the second again, okay, to test the condition. If it is true, execute the body again, does the increment and then test the condition. Once this condition become false, it will come out of the loop body. This is how the for loop is executed. So we can write, for example, if you are, if you have a program using while loop, we can write a uh, the same using the for loop. Okay, we can write it interchangeably. So let's do it a simple program here, just to add a numbers, you know, uh, from one to five. So I'd say int i is equal to one, and we have sum is equal to zero, right? So we said like while i is less than or equal to five, what we did is that we said sum plus equals i, that is sum is equal to sum plus i, and we said i plus plus, and finally out of the loop we are console dot right line the sum of numbers or the sum is okay. so simple statement just to print a sum of numbers from one to five so we'll get the sum is 15 from 1 to 5. The same we can put it by using the for loop, right? So in the for loop, initialization can be done, i is equal to 1. The testing, i is less than or equal to 5. The increment or decrement, whatever the action you want to take on the loop, loop control variable, okay? And just does the rest of the statement sum plus to i or sub is equal to sum plus i okay and we print this sum okay let me just comment this and we just execute this for loop it does the same job okay so we see this initialization and uh, condition and the increment decrement output in one statement, that is the for loop, okay? That variable, we call it as a loop control variable. The variable i, what we used here, okay? Is called the loop control variable, okay? So here we have a for loop that is executing five times, okay? That is the loop body is executed five times, zero to five, right? Printing the numbers in a reverse order. That is, we start from 10 and we decrement here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, every time minus 1 and print the i until 10 goes less than 0 or 0. So, this is a comparison between while, do while, and uh, for loop. So, it's very clear that what is the difference between them. Fine. So that's about the for loop. Now jumps in the loop that we want to jump from one place to another. We have seen that label jump. That is a label jump which by using the go to statement, go to label, right, in our program. Now here we have that label and we use that go to label, right? This is go to jump. That is we are jumping from place to another place in our program. So we have other types of jump like break and go to break. We have this break. This break we used in the switch, right? To break the switch and come out of the switch. Break can also be used in looping 
in for loop, in while loop, that that will break the loop and come out of the loop completely. It will just break the loop and come out of the loop. Okay. And uh, if you want to skip some part of the loop and continue the loop, we can use the continue. Okay, skipping part of the loop and continue the loop, we can use a continue statement. Okay, we'll see some examples for them. Like for example, break statement in the switch statement, we have seen that break, right? To break the switch and come out of the switch. And in the loop, we can break. For example, if you see this code, we are trying to print the numbers from 10 to 20. But we said like if the number goes greater than 15, break. Okay. Otherwise, it is just print the number and continue. Let print the number and continue. Right. Let me put it here for you. So it's we have an int number is equal to 10 and we said while number is less than or equal to 20. So we check if the number if the n is greater than 15. If it goes above 15, we simply say break. Otherwise, what we are doing is we are just writing that number console dot right line and we say that uh, or is this a number n okay and we are just simply incrementing the n This is break. Spelling mistake it is. Fine. So here we see that uh, it goes, for example, it goes n is 10, 10 less than 20, true, n is greater than 15, no, false. So it will skip this if block. This is a simple if. And just print the number and n, n becomes 11. Check the condition. When it n becomes 16, 16 greater than 15 true break is just break it and come out here. And if you have any statement here, let's say for example, thank you. Thank you will be printed. So now you see here 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, thank you. There is no 16, there is no number after 6, 15. Why? Because when n goes above, it break. Break will break the loop and come out of the loop. So in some cases in our programs that we want to break the loop based on some conditions, if the value goes to particular, if the, the variable takes particular value, we want to break the loop, then we can use this break statement. So break can be used to break the statement. Similarly here, uh, it is printing from one to four. When the value becomes five, it is breaking the loop. Okay. Now continue statement is somewhat like break statement. The break statement breaks the loop, whereas the continue statement will skip that value and continue from the next value, from the next uh, value of the loop control variable okay from the next iteration so if i say continue here okay when n becomes greater than 15 or let's say that if n is equal to 15 it will say continue that means that it will not do this job it will just go here to do continue here okay now in this case i need to add this somewhere here so that n will change after this so let me put it here and now let us run this we see that no we should skip this 15 
Oh, it is printing here. Printing should be there in here. Yeah, yeah. Printing should be here because when it says continue, it will take to the beginning of the to the loop again. Okay, with new value of n, right? So printing should be at the end. So now you see that 15 is skipped here. Right? So why is because of continue? So when it comes to 15, n becomes 15. It says if this condition becomes true, continue will take the cursor back to the loop control, the loop condition for, with a new value, okay, and goes to the 16. Fine. So if not, it will go on printing those values. Just go on printing those values. Fine. So continue is that the forces the next iteration of the loop to take place skipping any code in between okay for example here if a is equal to 12 continue we'll just simply take the a value here okay without skipping all this statement okay fine now go to and label we have seen the go to and the label right so for example go to loop one if this condition is true, it will take to the loop one. Loop one says continue, so it will continue from the loop, from the loop one. Otherwise, termination by break. Okay, this code will give you this output. This code. Okay. Although we are repeating this loop one and loop two hundred times because of this break, you know these uh, conditions. It will not go 100 times. It will go only for 10 times because of this break. Okay. So go to label we have used. Fine. So these are about the labels we have. So fine. So this is all what we have for you in this chapter number four, decision making and looping. Decision making and looping. So this includes decision structures such as if the statement, so we have seen simple if, if else, if else if ladder, nested if. Uh, we have seen the switch statement, uh, conditional operator, and then we talk about the looping statements, the while loop, the do while loop, and the for loop, entry controlled and uh, exit controlled, and then we talk about the jumping statements, uh, break, continue, and go to label. Okay. So this is all what we have in chapter number four. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Doctor, is there any difference between uh, if statement and the switch in term of uh, memory usage? In terms of memory usage, you. Okay. Uh, the if statements, it depends. Like if you are using an alternatively, uh, the switch is better, right? Because in if as there is a, a lot of condition checking will be there, one after the other, right? And taking every condition into consideration. Uh, and in the beginning, uh, in the switch statement, there is uh, the switch will work with a value, with not with the expression, and it compares with the cases. Fine. So it goes case by case. Okay. Alternatively, you can use it, but the best option is to use the switch if you can use the switch instead of using if else if, and if else if also. Uh, it takes, uh, uh, you know, uh, the the blocks. There will be like more than one block. If block, then else if, else if, else if. Okay. Whereas in switch, it will be more clear uh, to write the switch statement and to look into it. Okay. So uh, the best is the switch one. But alternatively, we can use this. Thank you. You're welcome.
Fine. Any other question? Yes, we are going to start this lab inshallah at 4 p.m. and uh, we'll use that lab link. Okay. Or we can continue in this link. What do you think? We'll continue in the same link. Let's use the lab link, what is given there. <clears throat> 